Beowulf, A New Telling, Chapter 1, A Ship Without a Sail. Before I start reading Chapter 1, which is pretty short, I just wanted to point out some uh, great features of Sora. And I know some of you have already used these before. But if you're doing your chapter summary and need to go back and reread a section or a chapter, remember, if you're not sure what a word means, you just kind of hover your mouse over the word, highlight it, click on it, and then you can either define it, highlight it, or search within the book. So if you weren't sure or remember, you don't remember what the Danes or who the Danes were, you can click define and it will give you um, the definition and a little bit more about that topic. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention before we got started. Here we go. Long ago, there was no king in the land of the Danes, and they all wanted one. When a ship without sails or sailors came drifting in from sea, they went to meet it looking for a wonder. And sure enough, there was a child in the ship. The child was curled asleep on a sheaf of ripe corn with gold and swords heaped around about him. A golden flag flapped at the mast. This is Odin's doing, cried a fisherman with a big white beard that blew in the wind like spindrift. We need a king, and he sends us this child across the sea. I'm sure he is a prince. Of course he is, said someone else. Look at his clenched fists and the way he smiles in his dreams. Oh, he's, all, he's royal, all right. Perhaps he is Odin's son, said a third. Now Odin was a great god. So the child was taken gently from the ship and wrapped in rich robes and hailed as ruler of all of the Danes. They called him Skilled Skeffing. Skilled grew up to be brave and strong, the terror of his enemies. He was tall as a tower and his eyes blazed like bonfires when he was angry. Running into battle, he could shout so loudly that men felt the cry like a hammer on their heads and fell down dead of fright. His sword was so long and heavy that no one else could lift it. His horned helmet was big enough to put an eagle in. When he sat down to supper in a chair in a chair carved out of a whole oak tree, the cooks ran to and fro, bringing him bulls to eat and barrels of beer that he drained in one go. His laughter cracked stones. So go ahead and type in the chat. What do we know about skilled skeffing so far? What are some of his character traits? Go ahead and type in the chat. For all of this, Skilled Skeffing was kind and wise, and his people loved him. Under his rule, peace came to the land of the Danes, because none of the neighbor countries dared to fight with such a giant. Instead, they brought him gifts and tributes so that he would not go to war against them. The treasury swelled until it was like a hill of jewels. At last, skill, Skilled grew, got to be old, an old man. His stride was still enormous, but no longer did his feet strike thunder from the earth. His body bent and his eyes, which once could have outstared the sun, grew watery. He could not eat a whole bull anymore. Skilled knew his end was near. He called his warriors to him and told them what they must do. Build me a great ship, he said, his trumpet tongue now shrunk into a whisper, and let the decks of the ship be strewn with gold and sword stacked upon the gold, and hang my shield and corselet in the prow, that the waves may know me and show respect, and in the heart of the ship, under the tall mast that must have no sail, prepare a bed that will burn, and in the heat of the bed let a sheaf of corn be planted." His warriors were sad, but they did as he said. Skill lay on a silver litter at the water's edge and watched with tears as the ship was made ready. When all had been done, and as he had commanded, he dragged himself on board and lay down on the bed. They piled jewels on his chest where the great heart beat uncertainly, like the footfalls of a messenger near journey's end. They saluted him one after another and returned to the shore in silence. Dawn was coming and the air smelt salty cold. The sheaf of corn flickered into a thin green flame. Then it was gold and raging. The whole ship blazed as it moved against the wind out to the waiting sea. So that is the end of chapter one. So what were skilled Skeffing's wishes at the end of his life? 
what did he what did he want his warriors to do? Go ahead and type in the chat. 